Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. We have we have a month to go until Venom. A, f- a fucking month to go. I mean, it, it just it boggles my mind that it's a month until this movie. I think we saw the first like teaser for it back in January. The one that was just god awful, right? It was just a terrible teaser. But now we're getting some estimates. We're getting some estimates for what the movie could pull in during its opening weekend, and this is is good for Sony actually uh bad for fans potentially uh if if you are hoping for a good movie to come out of what we might be getting in the next couple weeks uh you you may want to hold your breath but at least the the box office return is looking like it might be all right because it says here on cinema blend venom could have an especially big opening weekend uh, perhaps now it says as we're entering the final months of 2018, there will still be a few superhero movies left to entertain audiences. Aquaman and Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse are closing things out in December. And we're only a few weeks away from finally seeing Venom. I would like to pause and say that, uh, into the Spider-Verse is who that thing looks amazing. I cannot wait to see that Aquaman from that trailer from Comic-Con looks wonderful as well. I'm actually more excited for those films than I am for Venom, mostly because Venom just, it hasn't wowed me. It just hasn't done it. It just hasn't gotten in there. Maybe go like, I want to go see this. Am I going to go see it? Yeah, obviously I'm going to go review it. This is what I do for work. But uh, do I do I want to go see it? Eh, still not. I'm still on the fence. They got to give me that final trailer to, to, to really kind of blow my dress up. You know what I mean? Uh, now it says, not only is this eponymous character's second live action appearance following 11 years after Spider-Man 3, the movie's also delving into Eddie Brock's origin story without the web slinger present. So many are interested to see how this adaptation turns out. That being said, if current box office predictions are correct, Venom could become the biggest October opening of all time, not adjusted for inflation. Uh, that's that. That's what Sony wants right now. They want that kind of buzz. They want it to be looked at as this big October opening. Because even though the movie, you know, with what it's projected to be earning, will be small compared to like other films, for October it's going to be good. And uh, and that's what they want. They really want that to be a thing. Uh, this early box office tracking initially put Venom making between 30 to 50 million opening weekend domestically, while last month that range increased from 55 to 85 million. Now the Hollywood Reporter passed along that Venom looks to be settling down for a potential 65 million dollar debut, although Sony is being more conservative with its estimates, instead suggesting 55 to 65 million dollar launch. And that's a good move on Sony's part, by the way. Have it be a little bit lower. Right. You want it to be a little bit on the lower side. So then if it comes in a little bit under projections, you don't have egg on your face. But if you're like, well, we were saying it was 55 million the whole time and it comes in, like, let's say 57 million. They're like, oh, yeah, no, it was clearly within our projection. We clearly we clearly knew what the movie's going to do. We, we clearly know exactly what's going on with our studio, even though everyone else out there uh, from 2016 and 2017 will look at Sony and go, eh, eh, eh. You guys did Baby Driver and like Jumanji last year, and those did well. Other than that, you had a billion dollar write down from 2016. Sorry, 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 sorry. Not a billion, like 986 million or something like that. You know, I mean, like not quite there. It didn't get into the, into the, uh, you know, <laughs> the six zero, or was it the, the, the nine zeros club, whatever that would be. Anyway. Uh, now, if Venom manages to hit the $56 million marker beyond in the first couple of days, it will surpass the previous domestic October record holder, which is Gravity, which drew in $55.8 million on opening weekend. While other October heavy hitters in recent years have been The Martian and Paranormal Activity 3, Venom's biggest competition that weekend is Warner Brothers' A Star is Born, which has earned critical acclaim out of the Toronto International Film Festival, but is predicted to come in second place between $28 and $30 million domestically, with Warner saying it will be closer to to 25 million which is very yeah i don't know about you but i don't i don't feel it really feel like rushing out to the cinema to watch bradley cooper and lady gaga remake a, a, another movie i just I, it's not on my list of things to do venom on the other hand for just pure morbid curiosity is on my list of things to do but okay so traditionally superhero movies you know do well in certain months right traditionally it's like you know summertime or winter winter uh, oftentimes kicks off, you know, when, uh, Thanksgiving, right. But we saw last year, a bit of a shift. We did. We saw in 2017 and 2016, a bit of a shift. 2016, we had a February opening of 80 some million for, uh, for Deadpool. 
Um, you know, f uh, March 2017, Logan had a solid opening. Then, of course, you had fall uh, 2017 with Thor coming out November 3rd of last year and pulling in a lot of money. Uh, traditionally, uh, not at a time when superhero movies were going to expected to do very well, especially coming out two weeks before uh, Justice League. And I still I still stand by my argument on that one where uh, because Thor was doing as well as it did and it was as good as it was. Uh, it, it cut into the Justice League's uh, opening weekend profits. I'm telling you, I think it I think it really kind of hurt it. Very similar to how Deadpool 2 and Solo going up against each other uh, right around Memorial Day, I think, cut into Solo's numbers. Deadpool 2 having another $40 million weekend when Solo only pulled in, I think, around $80 million or something. Uh, and that, that extra money could have put it up over those projections. Again, we got to space these things out. Hollywood is realizing this. Uh, May is always a cramped month. Again, I'm off topic, but really when you look at Venom uh, coming out early October, um, it's a good time. I mean, it's meant to be kind of a horror thriller take on it. Uh, that's, you know, you want to get it out before Halloween so people have time to build up to wanting to go see it. Um, I mean, the movie clearly has a bit smaller of a budget and they're hoping that it's going to kick off this Sony uh, cinematic universe thing. Uh, and I have a feeling that the whole Black Cat, Silver Sable, I mean, even though that project's in flux, uh, and then, you know, uh, was it Mobius? What did I say before? I think I said Morbius before, but it's Mobius, right? The, the, the living vampire, is that it? Anyway, um, those ones are, are, you know, currently in development or whatever. And I think, I think those films will a hundred percent rely on whether or not this movie does well. And while I'm curious to see how it turns out, I'm curious to see what they do with it. I'm also very much apprehensive because as I said, the trailers have just not wowed me. They've just been like, oh, okay. And and to kind of cap this video off, what we're hearing, what we're hearing today is that uh, PG-13 Venom. So for everyone out there that was all like wanting the R-rated version of Venom, you're probably not going to get it. And this is actually Sony's tactic. I don't know if I'd argue it's a good move, but it's their move. I mean, like they want to make this movie accessible. I think, I think looking at the... Uh, at the potential earnings between 56, 55 and $80 million, which is, I mean, we're talking low end to high end estimate here. They're, they're going to want to have it go out to the largest audience possible. And, you know, there's going to be kids that grew up watching Spider-Man three and want to see Venom get his own movie. And you're going to have fans of Spider-Man all throughout the existence of Venom. And you're going to have fans that are going to want to see, I think just sheer curiosity, whether or not this is going to be a thing, but the PG 13 rating is not what people want. Ruben Fleischer can do violence. He can do gore. He can he can he can play it. I mean, look at Zombieland. The way he handled the gore in that was pretty good. He could do that here, and I think he probably did. But I don't think we're gonna see that on home. I don't think we're gonna see that till it hits home video. I think Sony is gonna play it safe, which is stupid because this project is not a play it safe. When you cut out Spider Man from Venom and 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 you move it from New York to San Francisco, and once again you allow Tom Hardy to act with a uh, just whatever accent, whatever voice he's doing this time. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever whatever he's doing. Uh, it just it's it's a risk. All right, they they threw some money at this movie. They wanted to be their Deadpool, but they're but they're neutering it if they make it PG thirteen. They are they're neutering it. They're gonna sit there and go, oh well, yeah. I mean, like we want it to do well, but you know, we don't want to like play up to what the character. The character is fucking violent, especially especially if there's any hints at carnage in this goddamn thing. If there's any hints at carnage, they wanna you know they're they're they want it rated R. But then again, let's let's be fair. Let's be realistic. What is it they're actually after? They want this PG thirteen. Because if it does well, then they can bring Spider-Man and Venom together in a PG-13 movie. Because Spider-Man is attached to the MCU at this point, at least for one more film, uh, after Avengers 4, uh, then then they're not going to be able to bring him into an R-rated movie. And I don't think you could do Carnage and not have it be R-rated, to be honest with you. But they're going to want to team them up. So if this does well, they're going to want to have that be a thing. They're going to be Spider-Man v. Venom or some crap like that. Or Venom v. Spider-Man. No, I don't know. I mean, this is Amy Pascal we're talking about here. And if she's not getting coached from Kevin Feige, then, I mean, Feige's probably going like, you know, you know you're know, you really messing with a good thing. That's my argument here. I think that's where we're at right now. I think 100% that's where we're at. Nah, I'm not, not happy.
<laughs> obviously, obviously, I'm not very happy about this. But anyway, there's a lot going on with this. I still have to see the movie to, to, to get there. So here's the thing. If you guys made it this far in the video, comment, right? Type in PG-13 sucks in the chat. So I know you guys made it this far. And if you want to support the channel, thumbs up the video, please. Uh, definitely do that. Helps out quite a bit. Uh, share it around. Subscribe. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Monday and Matt. Great way to help it. Great way to help out everything right now. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day and peace out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a patron today for just a dollar per month over at Patreon.com forward slash Monday and Matt.